Caddis Maximus here. Got a couple of bins of uh, some dusty wires here. This is actually just a basic introduction of the collection of wires and cables that I built up for basic electronic troubleshooting. This wouldn't be involving oscilloscopes and wave generators. That's much more advanced. This would be more basic things like using multimeters and power supplies. Many of these would be variable DC power supplies, kind of like this lab one here. And yes, you can hook up multiples of these, like these two channel ones. You can run the channels in parallel, as well as things like multimeters. And one thing I did want to quickly point out with multimeters is even though there may be uh, the standard for these types of multimeters, current or modern ones would be these extra insulated cables here that plug into these special recess sockets. I actually have a little cap in this one here. And so that's generally how these would work. And, but you can use standard ones. Usually these types of connectors are all known as uh, banana type connectors and they will make contact. So you can use other types of probes. You just wouldn't want to measure higher voltages when you're using uh, not as well insulated probes. And speaking of probes, these would be standard multimeter probes here. These are some flukes. These are a little bit nicer. Standard probes would just be these regular multimeter probes that just have a normal type of tip on them. The flukes are a little nicer because they have these interchangeable alligator clips. Some styles of probes, these have alligator clips, but they thread on. And the flukes are just twist on and they have these extra boots. So you can put those on a piece of wire and it prevents uh, any types of issues with shorting. Which brings me into another uh, thing I want to mention is various types of specialized adapters which since these probes are so common they make special adapters. Say you need to actually take a measurement on a screw terminal and you want to just have it held down you can get these screw terminal adapters which just will plug onto the back of these through friction and of course I have a positive and negative versions of those. There's also ones that are like this these have two little plastic isolators and just a bare tiny bit of a pin. That's so you can take measurements on circuit boards with having less risk of accidentally slipping or causing a short next to other components which are very close together. And once again, they're just a friction type of fit, so it's kind of neat they have all these adapters. There's even ones like this, which are the little hooks, so you can spring load and hook around a little wire, say an LED, if you're trying to figure out if an LED is burnt out or if the driver circuit is burnt out. And once again, they make these that will slide right on to uh, standard multimeter probes. So that's the first aspect. And really, it's amazing. There's a whole world of these types of connectors just to be able to take test measurements or be able to deliver energy to something. Now, these probes I was just showing earlier are just an older set of multimeter probes, but they are actually kind of unique because these have replaceable tips. They're very sharp and they are replaceable and so something that's not very common these days. Oh and before I forget multimeter probe adapters, here's some other adapters which also just slide on the standard multimeter probes. These kind of look odd the way they're bent and they have U-shaped. These are actually specific probes for getting in the wiring harnesses, any type of wiring harness uh, that has open back probes. So these would be often ones found in automotive applications, lots of industrial. You know, if it's a waterproof connector or a dust resistant connector, then there'll be seals around the back of the wires and these won't work. But many times you're trying to troubleshoot under the dash or something like that, um, or some type of connector, and you're trying to determine whether it's a problem with the connector itself or uh, the wiring to it. And so these are actually designed to slide down into the connectors and make contact uh, without actually having to unplug it and these types of things can be very handy. Here's another type of alligator clip, but these are very fancy. I'm not even sure where I found these from. I can't remember. U.S. Hopper. The reason these are so fancy is they're alligator clips. They have little teeth as well as like a little cutout so they can reach. But they have a couple real unique features. One is this insulation spike. So you put a piece of insulated wire. The spike is near the back part of the jaw, so you can actually use the front of the jaw to go ahead and press down hard and the spike will actually pierce the insulation so you can get a measurement that way. It also has this really interesting setup. This is a special assembly here where it has like about 20 needle sharp hardened steel needles. They're actually rusting a little bit. I need to put a little lube on there. And then a high like a piece of brass on the other side. These are designed for 
things like transformer wire, motor wire, insulated wire that has very thin insulation. So you put this over the top and all those little needle spikes would pierce that and give you a really good connection. And I thought these are some of the fanciest alligator clips you'll end up seeing. And then there are other specialized ones. These are, I think these are maybe used with like oscilloscopes, but they work great for power. These have, at least on this set, have, you know, easy uh, forks just to connect to the power supply. What makes these unique? One, they are shielded cables. That's what the green wire is for. You don't have to always use that. The other thing is you notice that there are two wires going to that. Is that for parallel, you know, just to double the current? In some situations, Excuse me, in some situations you could use it like that, but the real advantage to these uh, is the fact that each wire is going to one side of the jaw, and then this has a plastic pivot and a rubber band for the spring. So when you clamp on something, each jaw has its own wire. So you could be clamp on the, say, the side of an LED or something like that, and actually test it. Uh, just with one clamp because each jaw is its own separate insulated connection and they're gold plated and these actually come in handy a few times they're just really handy to be able just to grip onto something and actually have both a positive and a negative in just one simple unit you can of course do I just made some basic custom ones uh, companies like Mueller Electronics sells these types of uh, spring-loaded uh, hooks that you just solder your own wire into. So I did that and just used some audio uh, gold-plated banana plugs. And surprisingly enough, Mueller had these little insulated boots that were like banana plug size, and it was kind of odd. So I just put these together because sometimes it's just convenient for both testing or for powering objects just to have some custom ones like this. This will just be the same thing. This is just what a commercial-grade version of uh, the same item would look like. And a bunch of the rest of these are just ones that I found at uh, thrift, not really thrift stores. We had a, they actually closed down a few years ago, but we had a, you know, during the big 2010s era, 2000, you know, through 2015, there was a big era of just donating lots and lots of electronics. And so we had a kind of a nonprofit thrift store that was computers and electronics. They often got this type of stuff. So they had a big collection of these Promona, which are just the same thing. These have... Uh, the same type of banana plugs, but these are more st standard electronic testing where you can put other banana plugs crossways or, or stack them into each other however you need to, and they all just have these type of spring-loaded clips. But Promoto is one of the big brands out there. And, of course, there's also little micro ones like this. So these are just higher access for tighter electronics. Same type of spring-loaded clip. It just happens to be a super tiny one. And this is a kind of an oddball adapter, but you can actually use this as an adapter that converts a banana plug into a standard multimeter probe. So you can go both directions. And if you're looking down here, these are just high voltage. These are known as 30,000 volt high voltage probes. Many of these probes actually have a little hook because you'll kind of hook them onto the wire um, just for extra safety and you won't be holding on to it. The convolutions are, of course, just to make it so if there is an arc of electricity, or if there's a lot of dirt, that the convolution just means it's a longer path for it to follow. And if it tries to go across the tops of these, it'll have to jump through the air, which is a lot of resistance. But this is just there. These are just high voltage probes. And so they're designed to give you more physical distance from what you're measuring. Additionally, they have a huge resistor in them, like a one billion ohm resistor or something. And so that's the one thing is whatever voltage you're reading on a multimeter using one of these probes, you're going to have to multiply because the resistor is acting as a large voltage divider. And last but not least here, here's some other probes. Uh, they're similar to those flukes. These are some Huntron probes. And these are actually kind of interesting. I really like these for electronic testing because they are needle probes. But we can see, you can just barely see that these probes actually have insulation. The only place it's exposed is right at the needle point. And what's a big advantage to these is they have this little crimp and you can push the wire in and out. And so these probes are adjustable. You can extend them to get high reach in some very, very tight spaces. And they are actually pretty handy in some situations. And uh, so those are some actual adjustable or extension tip probes. And I uh, thought those were kind of cool. So now we'll jump more into power wires. Of course, I have some big clamps here. These are just, you know, for the certain situations where you may want a lot of amps, you do need some thick wire. 
these come with like car automotive car inverters that type of stuff so they're kind of handy to using with power supplies and remember a lot of the heat is i mean it's all watts but surprisingly enough even if you're working with pretty low voltage stuff five volts or something get enough amps going through it and you're going to need some heavy wire and many times you need a lot more amps at the lower the voltages just because the, the gauge of the wire is more dictated about the amps rather than total wattage. We have some oddballs in here. Whoop, let me get the last of this untangled. These things are actually current probes. These are some Radio Shack ones. They're actually pretty nice and uh, I do like them. They're rated for 10 amps and actually if you have a current clamp meter, these allow you just to plug something in and then immediately take your current clamp meter and just put it around this so you can get an easy measurement. Many misconceptions of the clamp meters, they just put it over the wire, but there's actually a balance between the two wires, so you'd actually have to peel the wires apart just to put the amp meter around one of them. Well, in this, these types of devices actually go ahead and break that one wire out into these loops, and they actually have a one times loop and a 10 times loop. And what's nice about the, mag the magnification loop is it allows you to use a standard clamp meter but be able to measure lower currents and so I'll just have a couple of those and what I have here is just a mess these would be anybody who's ever taken like an electronic class or worked in an electronic lab would be familiar with these which are the standard 12 gauge uh, diameter these are Promona pretty much all of them and these are link cables these are the type of cables you would link between power supplies or take from a power supply to connect to something else. Uh, there are many handy things such as these little Mueller, if we can get my camera to cooperate here. There we go, these little alligator clips and these are actually copper alloy and they're designed just to snap onto a power lead so you can connect them to a power lead and then you know grab onto whatever you're actually trying to drive. Surprisingly enough, you know, like in automotive applications, if you're trying to troubleshoot a solenoid or a cruise control unit and you just want to manually power the motor to see if it's a wiring issue or if the motor's actually burned out, but you're not getting like an open circuit, that's uh, what's great about these. And they just come in all sorts of standard lengths, 12, usually six inch increments, so 12, 18. I have some four footers even in here, which is pretty handy. Pomona isn't the only brand, but they're definitely a pretty uh, large manufacturer of those types of cables and then there's just the more standard stuff standard stuff being like these alligator clips they're just double-ended alligator clips and surprisingly enough those are used pretty often as well and then as far as like cable power link there are the banana plug style but of course there are also these heavy-duty spade lug style and the spade lugs uh, technically can can carry more current just because instead of a spring-loaded banana clip these are actually being uh, have a lot of pressure with the screw down clamps so those are what some more higher power options might be forgot about these these are some other interesting adapters these are banana clip splitters so these you plug in to a standard banana plug they have another in the back they are actually screw terminals so they allow you to convert a banana plug into a screw terminal that you could use one of these cables with which is actually a pretty handy device um, as well as having a pass-through so that you can actually, uh, say, deliver power through a spade, you know, convert from a banana to a spade, deliver power, and then also be able to take a measurement. So definitely these little adapters do come in handy. And here's some more Promoto items. These are, they kind of look like really cheap multimeter probes. But they're actually power delivery probes. They have the standard banana plug, and they're just kind of heavy-duty probes in case... There's some situation where you've removed some components from a circuit, but you just need to deliver some power. I've showed some other ways of doing that, but these are just probes where you can have two probes and you can just probe and uh, deliver some power and you may need to deliver a little bit of a high current. So these are coarser 12 gauge cables. And one of the other things is the tips are really short and really thick so you can put a lot of pressure on them because of course you're attempting to actually deliver energy with the probe. And there are certainly situations where that's super handy okay let me put 5 volts or let me put 18 volts right to this portion of the circuit i've lifted some of the components and let's see if you know whatever solenoid or relay activates uh really good for testing relays you can just deliver power right to the relay terminals and see if it clicks 
And so that's what these types of probes is. These are actually for connecting to a power supply and delivering power instead of taking a measurement. A couple quick things. Here's also some additional leads. These aren't Pomona's. I'm not sure they're not quite as good as a Pomona, but these are kind of interesting because these are also like miniature alligator clips just for clipping onto something and uh, once again, delivering power. And to uh, finish up this kind of odd video, is high power leads. If you really are uh, in a situation where you may link multiple power supplies together and you need to actually deliver a hundred to you know several hundred watts, these are the type of cables that you may want to get into. What's kind of interesting is since you know all these cables are designed for not AC but DC, I don't know why that's the come on now. Eventually they'll come out with a firmware update in my camera. Anyway on DC circuits, most of the energy would be delivered through the positive terminal. So this has a very heavy 10 gauge positive terminal and then a integrated kind of uh, separated. You can see how it's folded over negative return wire, which is only a 12 gauge. And the reasoning doing that is if you're delivering using a high amount of wattage, most of the energy is going to be used in whatever you're trying to power say an electric motor or something like that or a big trying to charge a large battery who knows and so that you just don't need quite as heavy a gauge on the negative usually you'll want to have it balanced but in electronic testing they felt that you know uh this is the the way it's done i'm not the best at explaining it that's why i do more basic electronic testing um, what you can do, of course, is use two of these, one as a positive and one as a negative, if you're in that situation. But that's what a, uh, these are what super high power connectors look like. So anyway, I had a few questions uh, over the time that I've been making videos about, you know, the occasional times when I've used one of those power supplies or talked about them. Um, and people have been curious what type of cables. They may have been familiar with the standard promoter cables, but I just kind of wanted to do this video so people can, you know, this is just a fraction of the style of adapters, connectors, and cables that you can get, but more of an eye opener to say, oh, okay, so there really is just a bunch of unique stuff. So when I get a power supply or something, I can get cables and connectors that allow me to get to do just about any kind of testing. And the reason I collect this is obviously the more variety of different types of, uh, you know, wires that I have the more, the easier it is for me to do something. Say I found a rechargeable power tool that doesn't have the power brick. And so a lot of the stuff I'll be able to find just the right cable to be able to kind of test it out and troubleshoot it and figure out uh, another power brick to charge the tool. And the myriad of other situations where having, you know, the right kind of probe just means that you get a much more accurate and reliable result. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.